purpose of this video is to is to introduce you to the concept of programming. As a human being, you have a very, very powerful mind. You don't have to think about every little action. A lot of the things you do are automated. I don't know if it ever happens to you, but sometimes you drive and you really don't know how do you get home. You don't have to think about how to take a cup and put it in your mouth and drink some coffee. You just do it. Now, computers are not like us. They're a little bit at a disadvantage here. They actually are very basic machines. The only thing they understand is zeros and ones. So every instruction we give them has to be very detailed. For the next few minutes, we're going to practice thinking like a computer and going over some concepts of the real world so we can identify better when we encounter the same concepts when it comes to programming. Computers solve problems programmatically. That is, they follow a series of sequential instructions and iterations. For example, when confronted with a group of people, if we ask who is the tallest person, computers will have to measure every individual and compare it to the rest in order to find the tallest person. In the process of comparing the individuals, they will need to record the information of who is the current tallest person and then compare it with everybody until one person remains. However, JavaScript also includes lots of functions and methods to help simplify the processes. So the issue is to be aware uh, that they are there and just know how to write them. With this in mind, uh, we're gonna go ahead and log into CodePen and uh, let's practice a little bit of coding. So we're going to go to the create menu here and I'm going to select new pen. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to put the same problem or finding the tallest person and we're going to use uh, JavaScript to solve it. Uh, so we're going to need to do some prep here on the HTML panel. We're going to need to uh, create some uh, basic HTML so we can output the result to our HTML page. So let's start with an H1 here. Let me go back here. Let's do H1. And we're going to say uh, finding the tallest person. And we might do include a little bit of instructions here. So let's use a paragraph tag. And we're going to say click the button to find the tallest person. There we go. And now we of course need to provide a button here. So we're going to we're going to code one. So button. We're going to give it a uh, let's create a button and then we'll go over on what else we're doing. So here. And the button is going to just say find tallest person. Again, you can word it any which way you want. You can have fun with this. Next, we're going to put a place so we can output our message. So here, and remember, at this point, you don't need to understand these things completely. We're going to be covering um, as you go, just kind of get you a feel for how this thing is going to work. All right, so I'm going to put a paragraph tag here, paragraph tag, okay, and I'm going to give it an ID that is going to be. demo we're just gonna call it demo and then i'm going to close the paragraph tag. No, notice that the paragraph tag is empty right now the paragraph tag will be populated once we press the button but first of course we need to uh, code or javascript so i'm gonna pull this up a little bit that way we can kind of see all the code there's a little bit of code you don't see over there let me pull it back so now let's work with our uh, javascript now, if we're gonna find the tallest person, we need to provide the computer with some information about the tallest person. We're gonna use a variable. A variable is like a bucket where you can put information either coming from the user or coming from hard-coded, like we're going to do, or it can also be generated for other code. So let's declare a variable. So let's go ahead and use the magic word VAR, 
to declare a variable. So whatever we type next is going to become the name of the variable. So you are creating it. All right. This in this case, I guess we can call it people. All right. And the people we're going to assign values. So we use the equal sign to assign a value. In this case, we're going to use an array. An array is a collection of more than one thing. So variables can store one thing or many things. So in this case, we're going to use many things. So I'm going to use the square brackets for that. Not the curly brackets, sorry, square brackets. And we're going to put the size of the people here. So I think in the example we use uh, 5.7. We also have somebody very big, 6.3, very tall. And then we have somebody that is slightly uh, shorter than that, 6.2. All right. And the other thing I'm going to do here at the end is add a semicolon to indicate that this instruction is over and we're going to move to something else. The next thing we're doing is we're going to build a function. A function is an instruction or a set of instructions that the machine is going to perform for us. So in this case, it's going to include finding the tallest person. But let's first build a function by itself. So we're going to use the magical word to create a function, and that is the word function. So it's sim similar to a variable. Whatever we type next, I forgot the letter N, is going to become the function. So I'm just calling, I'm just going to call it my function. Oh, let's call it first function actually. First function. Okay, I'm going to put a parenthesis. In this case, some functions return values. In this case, we're not going to return anything, so we're just going to do it like that. And then we have to use a curly bracket. And when you code these things, make sure that you open the curly bracket and then you close the curly bracket. Because again, this is semantically, uh, needs to be semantically correct or it's going to do all kind of sort and weird stuff on it. So this is an empty function right now. Uh, this function doesn't do anything, but it is, uh, it is there, all right? Now we're going to, the function has to do two things. We have to pass the value to the paragraph that we have here with the ID of demo, and we have to find the number or who's the tallest person in our array of people, right? There are several ways we could go about this. We could um, perform a calculation, save it on a variable, then pass a variable to to the uh, HTML document. But we're gonna keep it simple. So we're gonna look, we're gonna do this in a very very long single statement, all right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to target. Uh, this ID of demo so we can uh, so we can load the value so let's do that so for that we're gonna use the uh, word document so we're referring to our document that we have right now and we're gonna use uh, get element by ID then I'm going to open a parenthesis with uh, um, quotations and on the middle of these parentheses here, I'm going to refer to this ID right here of uh, demo. So I'm just going to type it. All right. And the last thing we need to do is we're going to target the inner HTML, which is the whatever text is after the tag. In this case, it's completely empty. So whatever we put here is going to... Uh, navigate over there. All right. So after that, I just need to equal sign and I need to tell it what am I going to place inside. In this case, we're going to have JavaScript calculate these for us. So we're going to use a function called mat that max. Okay. We're going to use dot 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 and then we're going to put the name. Put, we're going to write the name of the variable. So people. And at the end, I add a semicolon to let them know that that instruction is completed. All right. Now, before we test it, let's go through the logic here. So we have what we're doing with the function right now is we're going to say that uh, find this area of the document, which is here. And then that's going to be equal that the highest value that you have on the variable called people. So that's what the story goes. Now, so let's press the button and see what happens. So we press the button, and surprisingly, nothing happens, which is okay, all right? 
Um, in programming, even people who have been programming for years, these things happen all the time. So it's called debugging. You have to find the, the problem and fix it. And don't be frustrated when this happens. It's going to happen all the time. It's part of the process. It is expected to happen. All right. So the problem we have right now is that I press the button and nothing happens. So let me look at the button. And what we find out here is that there's a button and there's a function, but they don't. They are not associated with with each other, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to associate this function with the button. So the button is going to become the trigger to run the function. Okay. All right, so let's do this. So we're gonna go to the tag in the inside the tag, uh, the button tag, and we're gonna add an on click event. So on click, we're gonna put the equal sign, quotations, make sure they're close, and then I'm just gonna copy the name of the function with the parentheses. So Control C, I'm gonna paste it right there. All right, and uh, and uh, we're ready to test. Now let's see if it works. It might not work. Okay. So find the tallest person, mm, still not working, but I have this. Again, at this point is when people go frustrated, something like that. My point that I'm making here is that there is no need to do that, all right? It's expected. Now, what can we do if we don't know what's wrong? I mean, you can look at the code all you want, and you sometimes you might pick that you did something. For those of you that uh, maybe have done uh, JavaScript before, probably you already know what the error is. Now. But let's, for those of us that are newer to this, let's let's work it out. All right. So there's a tool that you can use now. Uh, CodePen has a console, but sometimes it's not the most usable thing in the world because see, this console is not telling me anything. So I'm going to close it here, and what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to open the browser console. In this case, I'm using Chrome, and I strongly recommend you use Chrome, by the way. Um, I'm going to use the F12 key, the function F12 key, right? And then I'm going to just clear the console because sometimes it comes with errors that were caused by something else. Now let's see what happens when I push uh, the button here. And I get an error message here right away. If I click again, it tells me that it repeated twice. So I'm going to read the error message. It might mean something, it might not, but it usually points you at the area in which the problem is. So it says on card type error document get element by ID is not a function. All right. So the problem is with this. Now, if you've never done JavaScript, then you won't understand what's wrong. But actually, this letter, this ID, the D should be not capi capital letter, it should be lowercase. All right. So let's, uh, once that I fix that, and thank you, console, I can click the button and if it works I'm gonna get the result right here so 6.3 now I'm going to go here to the variable and I'm gonna do 7.5 to see what happened and so if I click again I get 7.5 now again I'm getting errors but those are probably just because the um, yeah see I'm not getting any more errors that's what they say all right anyway so that's uh, that's how you use the console now the console has also another function. You can pass messages to test things. For example, um, if I'm testing my function, let's say I don't know what's going on here, I can actually uh, go here and add a, a message for myself. I'm gonna use something called a console uh, log. Okay, I'm gonna put a parenthesis. I'm gonna put quotations and then I put a message here. I'm gonna say my button works right and I'm gonna be very happy about it all right so let's see what happens when I press the button with that new code oh and don't forget the semicolon so I'm going to clear the console and I'm gonna press my button here and it gives me the information but also outputs uh, some messages here all right so again this is uh, a lot to take in and you don't need to understand every little uh, thing but the, the, the important thing really, really here is that you kind of see that that I can click a button that calls a function that performs one or more instructions, okay? Uh, in this case, it start, it's passing the value of the tallest people here on the array from the variable that I'm selecting 
and it's writing it in this area okay so that's the logic of what's going on here let me close the console here and and uh, so go ahead um, and uh, hope you you practice this uh, this uh, little short introduction and I'll catch you in the next video